the last and final story of the day is definitely going to be my most controversial story, um, but whatever. It's, it's about James Watson. If you guys learned in, in science class, I remember they always talked about Watson and Crick who were discovered DNA. They discovered the double helix. It's a ridiculously huge feat in science to understand DNA and the double helix. He won a Nobel Peace Prize, as he probably should have. It's a big discovery. It's changed science forever. He's 90 years old now, uh, the father of DNA, James Watson. He's been stripped of all his titles. Uh, he tried to sell his Nobel Peace Prize, apparently, because people thought he was a racist. And he's spiraling out of uh, you know, public control and they're trying to crush his every being um, because he has some controversial opinions. And he said some pretty uh, dumb stuff, I would say, that you shouldn't say. But let's go through it. So why is he under fire from the media? It's mainly because he's talking about what Stefan Molyneux and many people are talking about, which is he thinks there's a correlation between race and intelligence, and he thinks that it might be genetic and it's in the DNA. To me, uh, I'm gonna get into later if I agree with that or not, but whether I do agree with it or not, it's okay for people to disagree with me. Like, I, I don't care. You know, like Stefan Molyneux, he's all about the race DNA thing. I saw him say, uh, you know, Puerto Ricans have really low IQs on, a, on an average. It, I'm part Puerto Rican. It doesn't make me uh, sad or, you know, it does, oh, no, Stefan Molyneux said I'm not smart as him. Like, I don't, I don't care. He's allowed to think that. To be honest, I have my personal opinion of anybody that talks about their own intelligence a lot, I don't believe is very intelligent. You don't see that many quotes of Albert Einstein uh, talking about how intelligent he was. He was very humble and very, um, you know, self-deprecating with his humor which I think is more of a sign of intelligence rather than saying, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm so smart because my people are smart. To me, that's a sign of weakness and uh, unintelligence. But I agree with people. They're allowed to say it, especially a scientist. Like, yeah, go ahead, study that stuff. But the, what they, this is all from a Washington Post article. Apparently in 2007, uh, James Watson said, all of our social policies are based on the fact that African intelligence is the same as ours, whereas all the testing says not really. So he thinks that, uh, you know, African intelligence on a whole are, is not as high as ours. And there's also other studies that, that people like Stefan Molyneux always reference where certain parts of Africa they, they've studied have very high IQ. Certain parts of Africa have very low IQ. You know, the Ashkenazi Jews uh, on that scale have very high IQ. You know, Western world has pretty high IQ. Uh, Asians have higher IQ. Like it's not really uh, all white people that have high IQs according to that study. What I'm trying to say is he's not the only one who feels this way. We're going to get into it later. But he also added to this, and this is what probably got him in trouble. He said, but people who've dealt, who had to deal with black employees uh, know that isn't true. So he, he took a shot at black employees. Not a smart idea. Days later, this was in 2007. Days later in the Associated Press, he said, I cannot understand how I could have said that. Uh, I can't understand how I could have said what I'm quoting having said. There is no scientific backing for such a belief. So it seems like he backed down on what he said, although a PBS documentary is coming out or came out, and this is why it's all resurfacing. They asked him if he changed his opinions on race and intelligence, and he said not at all. So like I said, uh, just like Stephen Molyneux, he thinks that there's some sort of correlation between race and IQ. And James Watson, the found, or the discoverer of Double Helix said, I would say it's genetic. So he thinks it's genetic. I also wanna say real quick before I, I get into all the race intelligence stuff, cause that's a topic that seems hot this year. Um, he also has a lot of other unpopular opinions. One that I think is really funny. Sorry, I have a messed up sense of humor, but 2000 San Francisco, Chron in 2000, the San Fran uh, Chronicle reported that he, he thinks that sunlight exposure and sex drive has a correlation. I wouldn't doubt that, honestly. It makes common sense to me. But he said, there's a reason that people say Latin lovers and, and they've never heard of an English lover. I, I, I don't see what's really wrong about that. Like sunlight and sex drive, maybe that's true, maybe it's not. But I, when I'm hotter, I'd probably be more likely to want to have sex than when I'm cold. So I, I don't see how that's really a problem. He also, this is the one that's funny to me, sorry. He said he also thinks that thin people are more happy and inherently make them more ambitious than fat people. He apparently said in, a, in, a, in an interview, he said, whenever 
Whenever you interview fat people, you feel bad because you know you're not gonna hire them. I thought that was hilarious when I read it. I don't know if that's true at all. Like people interview people based on weight. I don't, I don't think that that's true. I just think it's funny that he said that in an interview. It's like, my man, are you, are you trying to, are you, are you trying to get a, are you trying to get the press to hate you? Because that's that's not going to sit well with people. It's one thing to say that that fit people have a higher ambition rate, but it's another thing to say <laughs> you're not going to hire someone because they're fat. I don't know. I just thought that was funny. Um, I'm not a snowflake. In 2002, he also said uh, he took a shot at women. He said having all these women around makes it more fun for the men, but they're probably less effective. Uh, so that did not sit well at all with the feminists as well. <laughs> having all these women around makes it more fun for the men, but they're probably less effective. So all in all, this guy's ruffling a lot of feathers. Personally, I find, I find it quite entertaining and intriguing, but I understand that I'm not the general population. So first of all, I want to say, I, I don't know that he should have been stripped of his titles or his, um, his Nobel Peace Prize. Here's why. I'm going to give an example. If Michael Jordan, if Michael Jordan came out to the public and he said, I'm smarter than white people, uh, I'm better at basketball than white people, and have you ever worked with white people? Uh, you'd know what I'm talking about. If Michael Jordan said that, I wouldn't want to strip his uh, NBA titles. I'd be like, whatever, you know, I, it just doesn't, it does, I don't know. I'm not that sensitive. It doesn't matter to me. If he said a bunch of anti-white stuff, who cares? Like, let him keep his NBA titles. The fact that Michael Jordan said that, would that make him less of a champion? You know, did he not win those nine, you know, or however many championships? No, he still won them. He was really good at basketball. That's why he got the basketball trophy. You know, it's not an award of like, it's not a uh, Michael Jordan knows a lot about white people award. It's a, it's a basketball award. So uh, with this guy, it's like he you know, founded the double helix. I don't, I don't care that he has unpopular opinions or pers perspective. I don't think it makes his uh, discoveries any less important to humanity and credible. And on that note as well, um, with race and intelligence, it's an interesting debate uh, that I don't really know where I stand. First of all, my name, if you guys haven't recognized yet, is Anomaly. Uh, anomaly means unlike anything else, um, you know, a deviation from the normal. So when you hear anomaly in basketball or they're in space, they see an anomaly, it means they found something that they almost never see. I chose this name because I feel like I'm very different. You know, I'm different from people who look like me. I'm different from a lot of my family members. I love them. Obviously, they gave birth to me, so I share their characteristics. But people are always like, do your parents agree with your new stuff? They're, I, they don't hate it. Or anything but no like no I am an anomaly that's why I name myself that you know I'm not I'm not really like anyone or a anybody in, in my family so that's how I chose my name on that note it's just like with with all the speculations of race and stuff it, it just doesn't bother me because regardless of my ethnicity I don't represent all people who are Italian Puerto Rican Pol like I'm myself and it should be obvious to people we should judge people by content of character. If somebody is a, like Ben Carson, for example, he's black, um, even if that was true, I'm, I'm gonna get to what I really think later, but even if that, like, it doesn't make Ben Carson less intelligent, he still, you know, operated or was the first one to do that surgery of Siamese twins. So it's not like, oh, he's unintelligent because he's black. It's like, no, he accomplished that. We're all individuals. We're not responsible for the lump sum of, of what our, people who look like us do. Um, on that note, I'm also skeptical of IQ tests, just to be honest. I don't, uh, I don't test well with anything. I've always tested bad in school. I've always uh, done terrible at the test that they wanted. Although when they did give me like a different, more creative test, I did well. Point being, how do you really test that stuff? You know, I'd, I'd have to look into it more to see if I agree with it or not, but I'm skeptical of any testing because you know, autistic people are very lack at a lot of things, but they're very super good at a lot of things. And, you know, I think when it comes to ethnicities, I, I do think that although we're all human, I think that we're all a little different. I mean, Asian people on a whole, not everyone, but Asian people on a whole, if you're 100% Asian, you have different facial characteristics. You know, the Africans and people from Europe Many times they have different facial characteristics, you know, different noses, different eyes, and slightly different. It's not like you have, you're a robot or something, but like we all have 
different uh, elements to us and that's okay you know some people like certain things some people like others we all have strength and weaknesses and all of us can go against the narrative you know they t they told Jeremy Lin Asian Christian basketball player he couldn't play basketball because how many Asian basketball players do you see not many but he did it and you know he's in the NBA because he's good enough I don't say the NBA should be 50% white people and 50% black people no and when I step on a court, I don't care what race people are. I'm good at basketball. So if I want to be in the NBA, I got to be the best. I don't want it to be a 50-50 split. And I don't want people to have to make excuses for my race or something just be, just so I feel better about myself. Like different, you know, races on a whole. I do think that there's, you know, very slight differences. And I think that's okay. And I think it's like with this, with the Molyneux stuff and, and Watson, I'm not... I'd have to research more to see where I feel like uh, what I, or to see what I really think about it. But to be honest, I'm sure that there are differences uh, in Europeans. I'm sure that there's differences in Americans. I'm sure that there's different differences in Africans and, and Asians when it comes to you know cognitive cognitive abilities or or you know certain skills of whether it be language or or intelligence as far as like what you would be. I don't know what intelligence would mean on a lump sum you know it's easier to be like science math like you could you could take studies from ethnicities and be like this uh this ethnicity on a whole is really good at math and science this ethnicity is a lot better at physical education this ethnicity is better at um you know history class like i'm sure that there's some sort of correlation there and i i just think that that's not a huge deal it's like it doesn't mean if I'm a certain race that I'm good at history. I suck at math. You know, you could be Asian and be horrible at math and you could be a, a rap star and that's fine. It's just like, I don't understand why people are so sensitive about these type of studies. I, I want to learn more about it. I, I enjoy listening to what Stefan Molyneux says. I don't agree with it all the time. And, uh, you know, I enjoy listening to what, what Watson says, even about women and sunlight and fat and skinny people. It's just like, Maybe it's not true, but he's allowed to say that and have you know a hypothesis for it. But maybe it is true, you know, and and maybe it's okay. Cause like when you, when you shut down free speech and say that everything's racist, sexist, and xenophobic, then we don't. What are we gonna stop scientific discoveries? Like what if black people are way better at something? And what if uh, you know Africans perform way better? Like I know in in certain parts of Africa they perform really really well, and that's fine. You know what if. Ashkenazi Jews do test really well and they're, you know, highly uh, capable at certain skills. Like, that's fine. You know, it's, it's, not, it's not a huge deal. I don't understand, like, the huge backlash over it. And I know they're, they're saying that, um, you know, like, even Molyneux, they're trying to, he's a racist supremacist who wants to do all this stuff. It's like, no, he's, that's just how he feels based on the evidence he's seen. And uh, I would have to look into it more to see it. And with with Molyneux and others and, and myself, like I'm, I'm not on the same wave, wave he's on, but I understand his argument as well as many conservatives where I don't care about IQ and you know all this stuff, but when it comes to cultures, not all cultures are the same. You know, I have friends from the Middle East, from Pakistan and Iran, Iran, and it's not the same culture. Like that's just a fact. So you want to bring in good people from that culture, but you don't want to import that culture that is incapable of coexisting with your culture and when it comes to Iranian culture and Saudi Arabian culture and Pakistani culture it's not the same culture and they don't want it to be the same culture and it doesn't coexist with to be honest liberalism in America uh, it doesn't it doesn't work so it, it makes sense to me like yeah different cultures in different countries are, have, are slightly different and it's okay to be cautious about bringing in the bad parts of that culture and I'm okay with them studying that because what if what if it's true and what if we're trying to equal out the playing field in a way it's never going to be equal I'm not saying white people are smarter than Africans but what I am saying is the leftist social justice movement is a movement of like communism where they, they don't care about the truth. They don't care about getting to the root of the problem. They don't care uh, about really making sure the best people uh, get to positions because in America, it's a free country. You have dozens of black millionaires, Asian millionaires, white millionaires, Jewish millionaires. Anyone can be a millionaire. Anybody can be in the NBA. Anybody can be the president. Anybody can do anything in America. That's what's great about it. We 
let people just do their thing. And if somebody wants to defy the odds, be like myself in Anomaly, you know, you can be a, a Asian basketball player. Like, yeah, it's not likely, but it, it can happen if you're good enough. And that's, that's cool with me. I like Anomalies. I am an Anomaly. And, uh, but what the leftist tries to do in America is they say we need 50% men, 50% women. We need 50% this, 50% that. But the truth is, men and women don't, on, on a whole, on a statistic whole, someone said Yao Ming. Yeah, of course, that guy was a, a freak of nature. He's enormous. But on a whole, men and women want different things. There's a reason that men die in the workplace the most. And no one talks about it, but men are not privileged in the workplace. Men are getting murdered and killed in the workplace at higher rates than women. Why? Because no women want to work the dangerous jobs. Understandable. I, I don't want to work them either. But men do. And they die. And, you know, they, they, they hurt their health. So a lot of women are nurses. A lot of women aren't in uh, tech. I have a friend who is an Indian Hindu woman in tech. She loves it. She's great at it. But she wanted to be there. You know, she's there on her own free will. She said, I want to be in tech. She does a great job. She has no problem in it. And uh, every, everyone's happy. But if you say there's not enough women in tech and we need it to be this, this way, it's not, it's not real freedom. That's how you get like a tanking society that has no ability to function properly. That's how you get free speech getting shut down when Molyneux or Watson's not allowed to say that. Like, I have to look more into it, but I'm, I'm not a scientist. I mean, this guy discovered the DNA double helix, so I wanna hear what he has to say. Whether I agree with it or not, I don't know how much he knows about women or race or intelligence or sunlight, but I'm interested to hear what he has to say and then do my own research on it because what if it's what if parts of it are true? What if we're trying to make certain sort of equilibrium that might never exist? I'm not I mean we're making strides, it's great, but like maybe we're meant to be different a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Maybe there's a reason that certain things happen. It's not all cuz people are evil. There are evil people, but like Sometimes you shake the pot and, and everything settles in its own way and people do what they want to do. And what liberals and this globalist, uh, you know, European, you know, thing, they're trying to just smash everyone together in a very unnatural way. I love America. I wouldn't exist without multiculturalism. I'm literally the product of Italians, uh, Puerto Ricans, um, Czechoslovakians, po Polish, you know, I, I am a product of multiculturalism, so obviously I don't have a problem with it. I don't have a problem with immigration. Obviously, my family immigrated to Ellis Island at a certain point, but naturally is better. And like a way that makes sense makes sense to me. I don't I don't like the left and I don't like the European UN like, you know, communist regime because they're not trying to do it naturally. They're just trying to smash everyone together and say, if you disagree with this, you're a racist, sexist, and xenophobic. If you want to have a discussion about intelligence if you want to have a racial discussion you're racist sexist and xenophobic and i, I want to have these discussions i don't i don't care that much about them but i think people should be able to say it because what if the intelligence uh you know test is wrong and what if every race statistically has a pro and a con and what if we started actually accepting those and you know working towards those it would make all of us happy because a lot of people are miserable it's because they're trying to make men be women and women be men like it's so okay. you can you can be in the nba and you can do this but like men are men and women are women they don't want people to be ourselves like maybe women want to stay at home and that's okay maybe men want to stay at home with the kids that's okay too but they're they're forcing it and they're trying to act like the differences we have don't exist like oh gender doesn't exist no it, it definitely does and there's a huge difference between the two. Ethnicities exist, and there's minor differences between the two, but there are differences, and it's okay. We all have beautiful culture, we all have something to add, but let's take the best from all cultures instead of uh, taking the worst from all cultures. And the, the propaganda from the media, like when it comes to race, from the Gillette commercial on, all the propaganda is anti-white and anti-man, and I mean, I know even black and Hispanic men, they know it's not working out for them either because if you're a man, it doesn't matter now that you're black or Hispanic. They don't want you to be strong because if there's not strong black men or strong Hispanic men, then the Hispanic and black community are easily manipulated. 
That's why I like good black and Hispanic leaders, although there's some, like in the rap community I don't agree with, a lot of them know that there is a war on men, and uh, I appreciate that, because there is. And my problem with it is, okay, all the propaganda is anti-man. They don't talk about all the ways that women are manipulative and do stuff. I'm not saying everything is women's fault, but women are not perfect by any means. There's a lot of things that women have. Women have privileges that a man couldn't even dream of. Like men and women live in different realities in a sense. If I was a woman, my whole life would be different because people would treat me differently. I would have different opportunities. I would, to be honest, I would have thousands more opportunities than I even have now in many ways. Like a lot of ways, like people open the door. Here, do you want to come here? Do you want to fly here? Do you want this stuff for free? Like women have a whole different reality than a man. Not all women. I'm not saying every woman subscribes to that and you don't have to, but it's true and it's okay. It's like we're different. Everything's anti-man and anti-woman, but here's what they don't talk about. Like in America, I obviously I'm not racist, sexist, or xenophobic, but they never talk about the fact that, you know, 12% of the population or 7% of the population is committing 50% of the murders. It's just true. The African-American or black community in America, if you look at FBI statistics, 7% of the people as black men are committing 50% of the crimes and they blame everything on white people and they act like it's everyone else's fault. I'm not saying that there's not other reasons. I'm not really, it's like, okay, it's just something that's happening. There's, there's other statistics that are going against, you know, whites or Asians or this or that, but I'm totally okay with exploring the differences, you know, and, and figure out why that's happening. And people do that all the time. I mean, Thomas Sowell, who is a black man himself, he's made the correlation as many others have, which is probably true. Look at the rate of crime and violence in America look at the black community and look at the amount of uh, single parents and fathers out of the homes and it's a pretty close correlation. So what if liberals are lying, manipulating people, you know, pumping up welfare programs, using rap music and popular culture to split up the black family, weaken the black man. They'll love you if you're a gay black guy and I have gay black friends, there's nothing wrong with it, but if you're a strong black man, look how quick they turn on you and you love your, your freedoms. There's a correlation, so what if not exploring the differences is, is crushing the black community. What if not exploring our differences is crushing the white community or the Jewish community or the Asians or whatever you wanna say? It's okay to, that we have slight differences and it's okay, I think it's okay to explore statistics and opinions and perspectives and look at our own communities and make jokes. I love racial jokes. I love when black comedians make fun of white people. I love when white comedians make fun of Asians. Like I just think Comedy is hilarious, and I love comedy because it's the last bastion of free speech. People make outlandish jokes about white, black, Asian, whatever, but sometimes there's some truth in the joke, and you're like, oh, that's kind of true and funny. Sometimes the joke is so outlandish that it's not meant to be true. It's meant to be fake and funny. Still funny. I just, I, I enjoy, especially now in a society that's so, that's so, uh, someone's.